Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. Uh, my name is John. I'm part of the leadership team here at King's. And I've got to say, this is, this is the third time that we've done this. And every, uh, every time, I'm blown away by just the talent that we have in this church. Everybody here, everybody who's doing things here is part of this church. And we have some very talented people. Would you agree? I would agree. It's, it's just amazing. And it's so good to see all of you as well um, here today. Thank you so much for coming and celebrating Christmas with us, particularly if you're a, a visitor. We love to make a big thing of Christmas because it's really worth making a big thing of. Although I've got to say, things have been getting a little bit weird. I think we've been, got some mixed messages going out there about Christmas recently. So last year, it seemed that it was all about a dog bouncing on a trampoline. And this year, it's, it's whatever this is. I, I, I don't understand. I have no idea what's going on. Uh, but that's the gospel according to John Lewis. But you know what? I reckon John Lewis could save a packet of money if they just took after Coca-Cola's example. I mean, can you imagine the Coca-Cola Christmas ad planning campaign meeting every, every year and somebody pipes up with, oh, guys, guys, I've got it. I've got it. Picture this. A big red truck with lights on and Father Christmas on the back, and there's snow, and holidays are coming. What do you reckon? You've done it again. You've just done it again. It's amazing. They must have saved a fortune through just putting the same advert out every year. But actually, something else is a bit like that. Um, that if you're around my age, um, so very young, <laughs> thank you for continuing to laugh over here. <laughs> if you're around my age, you, you can't help but feel excited when you hear this. Not that. There's a magical place, we're on our way there. With toys in the millions, all under one roof. It's called Toys of Us. Yes. Yes. It's so exciting. That is Christmas. Christmas has arrived. When I hear that advert, it just, for me, it captures the excitement of a child at Christmas. A child who's facing the prospect of getting loads of presents. Because that's exciting, isn't it? Um, I, I expect you have some memories, particular presents you got as a child. One that really stands out for me is um, when I, the year I got given the Millennium Falcon and several Star Wars figures. Oh, that was so exciting. I opened this present. I was like, yes, it's so exciting. But do you know what? Part of uh, the excitement for me at getting that, apart from it being an awesome present, was that it represented definitive proof of something for me because this was exactly what I had asked for from Father Christmas in my letter to him that I'd sealed up and that my mum had very kindly offered to post for me. <laughs> but it was so exciting to get this present. But not all presents are quite as exciting, of course. No, they don't all live up to that, to the, to the hype. So my granny and grandpa used to come over every Christmas day. Uh, this is back in the 80s, back in the 1980s. They would come over on Christmas Day, and they'd, every year they'd get my two brothers and my sister a Middlesex Cricket Club diary with a five-pound note on the inside. And they always got me something different. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe it's because I was the youngest, um, or maybe they just preferred me. I, I don't know. But um, there was one particular year where I was really excited because it's quite a big box they got me. And you know, at that age, the bigger the present, the better. And uh, I was just so excited. They had been given their diaries, which was all a bit dull. I had this box, and I was like, what's, what's in this? What have you got me? What have you got me? So I was ripping off the paper and opened up the box to find this. <laughs> a bird box. More precisely, a tit box. Don't Google it. I mean, that is just what every young boy wants, isn't it? <laughs> Brilliant. Now, I'm apparently, I'm not very good at disguising what I'm thinking or feeling. It, it, I have been told it just shows on my face. I'm, not, I have, I'm just incapable of disguising it. And um, I, I don't know what the look on my face exactly was, but what I do remember is everybody, except for my granny and grandpa, were laughing. And one of my brothers was literally rolling around on the floor, <laughs> crying with laughter as I tried to say oh, thanks <laughs> to my granny and grandpa for this incredible present. Not every present we get lives up to the anticipation, but 
it's a great memory. It's a great family memory. I'm sure you have those kind of memories. And actually, what Toys R Us and Coca-Cola and others like them are trying to do in keeping it the same every year is to tap into the importance of those memories, good memories, into our sense of nostalgia and tradition. And there's a lot of tradition around at Christmas. I'm sure you have your own family traditions, and we watch the same films each year. Sometimes on the has to be on the right day. So for us, Muppets Christmas Carol, Christmas Eve. They go together, hand in hand, and it means Christmas. We're ready for Christmas Day then. Um, you know, flicking through the Argos catalogs, listening to the same songs that we've been listening to for the last 30 or 40 years. Um, I was listening to a radio phone in just a couple of days ago, and the phone in was all about tell us about your special memories associated with some of these Christmas songs. Because nostalgia can be a very powerful thing, indeed, a very powerful uh, longing. As you look back to your past, you look back to your childhood, to maybe what felt like a simpler time, or maybe a, a happy time. And I, I do appreciate that, of course, that's not the case for everybody. But the word nostalgia itself carries the meaning of aching, it's an aching for a homecoming. That's what it means. A yearning to recapture something from the past. Maybe a feeling of security uh, or of comfort or of acceptance that maybe feels like a bit of a comfort blanket in an adult world that is altogether less innocent and less secure. And I think because of that yearning that we have, that's why we tend to strive at Christmas time particularly to try to create those perfect moments. We try to create the perfect atmosphere so everybody can be happy we had one of those moments just the other day when it was snowing so we were sitting down as a family uh, to watch one of the, the greatest films ever made home alone great christmas film and uh, the christmas tree lights were on it was snowing outside snow falling from the sky blanket of snow on the floor and and it was just one of those moments it's like oh, if you could if you could bottle that moment if you could capture that moment and live in it forever you you would but of course, the reality is that those moments pass, and life goes on. And so alongside the sense of excitement and happiness in those moments, there can also be a sense of sadness, just a tinge of sadness, because that's what nostalgia does. It's a powerful yearning, a powerful longing, a powerful aching that in the end just leaves the ache when you realize that you can't fully recapture what you were trying to recapture. And I think we all experience a deep sense of longing in our lives. We, we all long for a better world. We long for peace in our lives because we're aware that we don't always have it, that actually sometimes it feels like there's something missing, that something is not quite as it should be, it's not quite right, and we're reaching and grasping for something, we don't really know what, for, for a peace, for a happiness that we feel we're meant to have. We feel we were made for this kind of peace and happiness, but we can't quite grasp it, we can't quite attain it, we get glimpses of it at those moments, but it's never the full thing, it doesn't last. And so there's a restlessness in the human heart that means that even when we do find a sense of fulfillment or satisfaction in something, whether that's family or a relationship or uh, achievements, career, your career, um, having money, going on a holiday, or even Christmas, it's only ever temporary. That satisfaction doesn't last, and so we're always looking for the next thing. We're always reaching for the next thing. And it was C.S. Lewis who said, if I find in myself a desire which no experience in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that I was made for another world. And you know, I think deep down we all know that's true. I think we all get that, that this is not it, that there's something else, that there is more. I think we all know that there is something deeply wrong with our world. And if we're being really honest with ourselves, we also know that we are part of the problem. We are not the solution. So I saw one of those memes on Facebook the other day, and it went something like this. Be your own hero. You have enough. You are enough. And it sounds wonderful, doesn't it? It sounds really empowering and, and lovely, but I'm afraid to say it's just utter nonsense. It's rubbish. You know, I, I guess, I, my guess is that in the eyes of the world, I would be seen as a relatively good person, okay? But if I'm relying on myself to be my own hero, if I'm relying on myself to be enough, I am in big trouble. I'm in deep trouble. Because every time I don't love my wife as selflessly as I should, I realize that I am not enough. Every time I get unfairly irritated with my kids, I realize I am not enough. 
Every time I upset someone or hurt someone, I realize I'm not enough. Every time I make a snap judgment about someone without even knowing them, maybe because of what they look like, I realize I'm not enough. Every time I walk past a homeless person on the street with a lack of compassion, every time I see human suffering on the news and I'm not moved by it, I realize I am not enough. I am not the solution. I am the problem. I am what is wrong with the world. The pride that runs through my heart and the pride that runs through every human heart really is what is wrong with the world. But Christmas, Christmas is good news because Christmas does point us to a solution. And Christmas points us to the hope and actually the promise of that better world, the one that we instinctively know that we were made for, a world without things like depression and anxiety and mental health problems, and a world without bullying and violence, a world without conflict, a world without selfishness. Christmas points us to the promise of a world that is just like that perfect moment that we wish we could bottle, but except this one does go on for eternity. Because Jesus came. Because Jesus came. Because God himself came as the hero. He came as the solution. Because only he is truly enough. We are not the solution. He is. And so because of that, he chose to leave his place of majesty and glory so that we could have access to it eternally. And Jesus was rejected so that we could be accepted. And Jesus lost his peace so that we could have peace with God. And Jesus gave his life. You know, just consider this, that he was the only person ever to choose to be born. He could have chosen to be born anywhere, into any circumstances. He chose to be born into poverty. And he chose to be born knowing what this was going to cost him, that ultimately he was born in order to die. He was born in order to be a sacrifice for us. He gave his life so that we could have life and have it to the full. You see, Christmas, this is why we make a big thing of it. It's because it's very, very good news. It's very good news. Emmanuel, God with us, the central and defining event of history. But do you know, it's only good news for those who know that they are not enough. For those who know that they need a savior. For those who know that they need, and the whole world needs, a rescuer and are willing to put pride to one side and just receive him and the gift that he brings. Now, you might be wrestling with whether or not this is true. You, or maybe you just think it's not true. This Christmas story that we're so familiar with, well, you know, it's just a fairy tale, isn't it? It's just a legend, a, a myth. Is it true? That is surely the crucial question. Is this true? Clearly, I think it is. Well, why would I think that? Why would I think that this is true? Well, apart from the sheer weight of scholarship and historical research and analysis and uh, textual criticism uh, and scrutiny that would absolutely affirm the authenticity, uh, the historicity, the accuracy of the New Testament documents about Jesus. You know, this is not a blind leap of faith that we take here. This isn't just a leap in the dark, a naive belief in some sort of fairy tale. No, there are very, very sound reasons to believe that what the Bible says happened is actually what happened. But apart from all of that, why do I believe this? Why, is, why do I think this is true? Because I think that this is a truth that is self-authenticating. Because you can know the person for yourself. You can know him for yourself. And you can know peace with God for yourself. And that is what I have encountered. That is what many here have encountered. And it is amazing. It is wonderful. And it's completely undeserved utterly undeserved but it changes everything it changes your whole life it changes your whole outlook on life it's very good news and because Christmas is such good news and because the gospel the news of Jesus Christ is such good news I really want to invite you to check this out for yourself because I just think it's far too important not to it's just it's far too important to close your eyes to and not take the time to investigate this properly there's a couple of ways that you can do that. So one is to come to Alpha. So we're going to be running an Alpha course down here in the new year. There's information on the flyers that you have on your seats. Please do take those flyers away. You, you can come to Alpha. Millions of people in the world have done Alpha. 
It's a really well-known course. You can come to Alpha. You can ask any question you like. No questions off limits. Any questions. Uh, you can explore any points of view on key questions to do with the Christian faith. And there is an absolutely no pressure. There is no judgment. You just come and you explore. You come and you investigate along with many others who are doing the same thing as you. You'll be so warmly welcomed. I can absolutely guarantee that. So consider coming on Alpha. Secondly, I'd like to invite you to come on one of our Sunday morning meetings. In fact, don't just come to one. Come to a few. Come and really give this some time. Come and check this out. Come and look close up to see what is it we believe. How has this changed our lives? Is there something here for you? Come for a few Sunday mornings. We meet here uh, every Sunday at 9.30 and at 11.30. Not next Sunday. Next Sunday is one meeting at 10.30. But most Sundays, 9.30 and 11.30 down here. And we also meet up at, up at Hazelmere site at Sir William Ramsey School at 10.30 if you live closer up there. You would be so, so welcome to come. They, again, no pressure, no judgment. You can come in, sit at the back, and just observe if that's what you'd like to do. But do come. Because if you do, you will see, you'll see a whole range of people. You'll see people of all different ages. You'll see people from all different nationalities, all different backgrounds. But what you will see is the reality of Jesus in people's lives. A bunch of very ordinary people who have been profoundly affected by the truth of the gospel by the love and the power of Jesus Christ and by the peace that he brings and that he brought at that first Christmas. And so I'd really encourage you and I'd invite you, you are so welcome to come and investigate this for yourself. And do you know what? You have absolutely nothing to lose. Nothing to lose, but potentially, if this is true, you have everything to gain. So I'm going to invite the choir to come and take their places. They're going to sing a song, a couple of songs to us, but as they do, let me just finish by wishing you a really great Christmas. I pray you'd have lots of those perfect moments. But what I do pray is that your Christmas would be filled with the love and the peace of God. Thank you very much.